My path through Kansas was through the Oklahoma Panhandle. I had no real big reason for taking this route. I just wanted to see what a panhandle looked like. Well, it's long and straight with lots of telephone poles. But some people just aren't into counting telephone poles. You might just be like this guy and speed across it as quickly as possible. A couple hours in and I reach the Kansas state border. Now my route is a little confusing, but let me try to put it in a nutshell. My goal was to see a little bit of Kansas while only staying at free campsites. For me, I preferred a diagonal route, which started off in Liberal, went through Mead, Dodge City, Maxwell Wildlife Refuge, Mushroom Rock State Park, Wemego, and finally Leavenworth State Park. Freight trains are a big deal in Kansas. For where there's trains, there's grains. A lot of corn, sorghum, and soya beans. With 90% of the land area devoted to agriculture. While many railroad towns are doing quite well, there's always a few that the trains now pass by. Sentinels of a better time, soon to crumble in the dust, or fall over in the wind. Wind is certainly engraved in the culture of Kansas and why this house in Liberal is a big hit with tourists. Along with its yellow brick road and its storm cellar, there's a statue of Dorothy and Toto looking skyward. Others look at the wind as the future for the Sunflower State. For when you peer past the telephone poles, you see a new crop on the horizon, wind generators. Although still in its infancy, the potential for wind power is enormous in Kansas and second only to Texas as a resource for capturing wind energy. A wind corridor stretches across the U.S. from the Texas Panhandle to North Dakota and Kansas is right in the middle of it. As massive and imposing these turbines are on the horizon, it's nothing compared to the new and larger wind turbines now being built. I was fortunate enough to notice two flatbed trucks parked beside the highway while I was getting gas. My curiosity got the best of me. There's no way you can appreciate how immense these blades are until you get beside them. They're huge! Technology aside, I was here to camp, so went to Mead City Park. For a population under 2,000, I was pretty impressed at this green area. Although a little bit of traffic noise, it also had lots of activity areas and places to picnic, but best of all, it had a little spot for a couple of little trailers like mine to camp for free. The squirrels sure like it, gorging on corn and grains left by the locals. It's a wonder they weren't too bloated to even climb a tree. And this shaded area under the vines was the perfect place for a morning coffee. Well, if there is ever a list of friendly parks for people to travel, then Mead City Park has to top that list. It is just beautiful. This is Kansas, and this isn't the Kansas I would have expected. Everybody thinks of prairies and all that, but it's beautiful, big, gorgeous trees, lots of birds, the fattest squirrels I've ever seen. And like right over there, there's a spot to camp, to leave your trailer, and there's actually even tent camping. There's, uh, there's uh, toilets that actually flush with sinks because they have water. There's free water everywhere. 
there's a dumping station over there uh, lots of places for the kids to play frisbee toss a swimming pool I mean what else would you want in a park and they love the, 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 the people are really friendly they love to see coming in I've had a couple of people say hello uh, just gives you a good warm feeling I love little towns like this that's what makes traveling fun but there was one more bonus of this park I almost missed as it was fluttering in the grass monarch butterflies are pretty common in the east but where I come from, there's not one to be seen. Finding a couple was a treat, but when I traced them back to a grove of cedar, I was in butterfly heaven. As this was late September, it's most likely they were on their migratory route to Mexico with a stopover in Meade, Kansas. Like the butterflies, it was time for me to catch a wind. Well, I sure caught the wind in Dodge City. I'm sure it has its charms, but the scenic overlook wasn't the kind of wind I was hoping to catch. Declared the queen of cow towns, the queen kind of stunk. Located above a stockyard, the wind carried the stench of cow dung and flatulence up the hill. It was time for me to get out of Dodge. The next stop on my tour was the Maxwell Wildlife Refuge near Canton, Kansas. Nestled around a fishing lake is a large grove of shade trees with plenty of spots for primitive camping. Not much for facilities or cell signal, but plenty of wildlife to appreciate. Well, this is definitely peaceful. Nice little lake. Chirping of the crickets. Sun's just going down. And uh, quite a few blue herons or gray herons in the marshes. Beautiful spot. I did make a big transition today. I really noticed it. And that's when I came across Kansas from the hot, dry desert of the west to the hot humidity of the east. You really notice it here. I can, I can smell it, I can feel it. Definitely different. And I also found something totally different today. Oh, look at the kingfisher. And that's when I came into the park, there was all these zombie brains all over the place. And I had to ask a local, what on earth is this? And they call it a hedge apple. Big green, almost it's bigger than an orange. Has actually a very sweet perfumey scent to it. But as long as one doesn't drop on my head or on my solar panels or anything for that matter, I'm okay. It certainly doesn't look like something I'm going to eat, but it's something new for me today. Weighs a ton. Along with the danger of a spiked fruit falling on your head, there was a sign coming in warning about the dangers of the animals. The turtles and the frogs seem peaceful enough, but the wild bison roaming around the park was another story. There are about 200 bison in the refuge, with plenty of safe viewing areas for nature lovers. Although this shot may look like it was taken from a blind, in reality, it was taken from the roadside from my Jeep.
But when this big guy stuck his tail up in the air, it was time to get out of Dodge again. Oh boy. <clears throat> Feeling a little rough this morning. I think it's the humidity. It's so damp here. Oh, sun's coming out. That's a good sign because hopefully it'll dry some of this dew. But last night, I was trying to figure out what the weather was. Because I've got no connection here. Absolutely nothing. But I do have a little AM radio. And so I did find a station. And they said that there might be three inches of rain wherever it was. So that sounded pretty nasty. That concerned me. But the only thing they kept saying was that it was the tri-state, tri-state weather. I was like, well, where's the tri-state? I don't know. I'm not from here. You know, it's like, do some states try and others just give up? <laughs> I don't know. In any case, I guess I wasn't close to the tri-state because it did not rain three inches. But uh, really, they got to try a little bit harder for people that aren't from the area as to say where they are. Just give the name of a town something. Then I can figure it out. I shouldn't just feature the mammals, reptiles, and insects without showing that this place has really gone to the birds. Yes, vultures may not be the most graceful of our feathered friends, but there are some other birds that are really fascinating to watch like this great blue heron. Well, as calm and relaxed as he may seem, it doesn't take much to spook him. Eventually he did return, but insisted on a staring contest between me and him. It was only after a couple of turtles swam by that he took his attention off me. Watch how the turtle heads disappear at the same time. By dusk, all the fishermen, both animal and human, had left for the day, which meant I had the lake and its calming effect all to myself. Nothing like the lullaby of frogs and crickets to help you sleep. Mushroom Rock State Park is in the middle of nowhere, which just happens to be the middle of the state of Kansas. The first rock you see looks more like a walnut than a mushroom, but if you follow the white rabbit, he'll lead you into Wonderland. Seems everyone and their mom has decided to engrave their initials on the stem of the mushroom. But there is one in the field that is a little less autographed. Very unique rock formations here, and the admission is free, which makes it a worthwhile visit. Wamego, Kansas is a cute little town with some very impressive architecture on its main street, including an 1893 music hall seen on the left. 
Along with a winery and a tulip festival, the most popular attraction is no doubt the Oz Museum. The exhibit includes the original books by L. Frank Baum that started the whole phenomena in 1900. The collection is an eclectic mix of period memorabilia, promotional releases, collectible figurines, as well as some replica and original costumes from the MGM release of the 1939 movie. But the collection wouldn't be complete without a pair of ruby slippers. And of course there's life-size figures of Dorothy and Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion, all presented in Technicolor dioramas. The best representation of all things evil is the Haunted Forest and the Wicked Witch of the West. Which brings me to one of my favorite characters, the Flying Monkeys. But with the sand in the hourglass running out, I needed to click my heels and get back to my Kansas trailer home. Well, it wasn't too bad until the wicked wind of the north showed up. Temperature dropped about 20 degrees too. Ugh. The last stop on my Kansas journey was the Leavenworth State Park just east of Kansas City near Tonganoxie. It's another fishing lake surrounded by lush, thick forest. Well, I can't say there's anything really outstanding about this spot. It's a little lake, a fishing lake, which I I'm sharing with fishermen, of course, but uh, it's kind of a little grubby and messy. There's lots of beer bottles and cans and burnt things all over the place, so um, it serves its purpose, but it's not going to be in my top 10 list. I mean, the main reason I picked it is because it's so close to Kansas City. It's only 20 minutes to uh, Kansas City, Kansas, and another 20 minutes to Kansas City, Missouri, so it's the location, not the ambiance. But somewhere in my travels, I picked up a hitchhiker. Well, I was going to put up another poster up on the wall, and I have this felt pad where the side meets the top just to prevent from scratching. And I noticed there's a chunk of mud or something on it. But when I put my finger on it, was a badass spider. I found a pop bottle and trapped the little intruder. Seemed he liked the taste of Mountain Dew though and didn't want to leave. But I finally convinced him to vacate. One thing I really noticed last night is that the temperature didn't drop at all. It started off muggy around 74 degrees and it was basically the same when I got up this morning. Uh, the humidity doesn't seem to cease. Whereas in the west, you know, the temperature can drop 30 degrees easily and it's dry. Something to get used to if if you live in the east. I guess if you live in the east, you're already used to it. Well, I really enjoyed my journey through Kansas, from butterflies to bison, from Wonderland to Oz. But rather than ending it with this night shot over State Lake, I'm gonna go back to the zombie brains I found at the wildlife refuge, and the best way to exterminate zombie brains. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my others.